If I don't do something drastic in the next five minutes, I'll lose him forever. Jack's the first guy I've had feelings for in a long time. We have loads in common, we laugh together, and the chemistry is undeniable. But as I sit across from him at the restaurant, I can feel his interest in me fading. He looks bored and distracted, and I know if I don't say something to change his mind before we finish dessert, he'll be gone from my life forever, leaving me alone and frustrated, hopeless that I'll ever find a man who feels about me the way I feel about him. I take a deep breath and say something which up until a week ago, I never would have even considered saying. And suddenly he's attentive and energized. He's touching my arm as we talk. And by the time the bill comes, he's holding my hand and looking deep into my eyes and telling me I'm the only woman he could ever imagine being with. Hi, I'm Emma. And I'm going to show you what I said that day to unleash a flood of emotions in Jack, which wiped out all doubts he had about being with me and made him absolutely sure I was the only one for him. And I'm going to show you what you can say to release a chemical cocktail in any man's brain, which shuts down his desire for other women and focuses all his romantic desire onto you. So you're the only one he can imagine being with. I'm going to show you why checking all the boxes of what a man thinks he wants isn't going to make him sure you're the one for him and what you need to do instead to give him absolute certainty there's no one better for him. It's all based on an emotional tripwire in the male brain discovered by researchers at Rutgers University, SUNY Stony Brook, and the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York, which cuts off a man's feelings for other women and makes him unable to stop thinking about you even if he wants to. Once you activate it, he starts to idealize you, forgetting any reasons he might have doubted you were right for him and seeing only your positive qualities, so he has no doubt you're the only one who can make him happy. You can use it with a guy you just met to stand out from all other women as the only choice for him. You can use it with a guy you've just started dating to erase any feelings of doubt he has about going all in with you, so all he cares about is securing your love. You can even use it with your long-term boyfriend or husband to make him realize how lucky he is to have you. So he sees you as the center of his world and he's willing to sacrifice anything for you and your relationship. I first discovered this emotional tripwire and the exact scripts which set it off after one of the most humiliating experiences of my life. I was working as a freelance journalist and Liam was the CEO of a tech startup. We started dating after I interviewed him for a feature on the year's biggest tech turnarounds. He was good looking and in great shape without being vain. He was passionate about his work. He made me laugh and the sex was incredible. Best of all, he wasn't afraid to show how into me he was, which made me feel safe enough to open my heart in a way I hadn't in years. That's why six months in, when he said he wanted to talk, I was totally blindsided. I think you're great, you're beautiful, you're kind and smart and fun, he said as we walked. You're everything I've always wanted in a woman, but something's missing. I just have this feeling you're not the one for me. His words hit me like a freight train, knocking the air out of my lungs and leaving me disoriented and confused. I pushed him to say what exactly was missing and begged him to tell me what I could do differently, but he couldn't give me an answer, and nothing I said or did would change his mind. It was the second worst day of my life. The worst came a few months later. You see, at the end of our walk, I did something I'd promised myself I'd never do. I lost whatever dignity I had left by asking him if we could still be friends. It was a mistake I would pay dearly for. We continued to text and chat a couple of times a week, send each other funny pictures or articles we found online, and check in with the odd goodnight text. I loved knowing he was still thinking of me and that we could still laugh together, and I figured at some point he'd realize I was the perfect girl for him and we'd get back together. Boy, was I wrong. It was a Monday afternoon when he first mentioned her name. We were on the phone as he drove home from work, and he said he had gone shopping with Stephanie that weekend. I felt a jolt of jealousy through my body when he said her name. Stephanie? I asked, trying to sound casual. I don't think you know her, he said. She's just a friend. She works with Tyler. I tried not to make too much of it, but she kept popping up on his social media. I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw her comment on his profile picture. Love that face. I reminded myself he'd said she was just a friend. I saw her sitting next to him in a group photo and reminded myself she worked with his friend, so it was only natural she'd be hanging out with the group of them. 
But when she posted a selfie with the two of them where she was kissing him on the cheek, it was hard not to panic.